Uh, on to Mr. Sikan. Good morning. I'd also like to welcome you back. Um, in, in regards to C49 and C30, in your opinion, do you think there's a gap between the two? Thank you for the question. I, I have looked at all of the recommendations that were in uh, your study of, uh, of Bill C-30, and uh, I believe you had 17 recommendations. Uh, we've gone through all of those, and I would say we have addressed them all. Uh, now, we have uh, addressed them all in uh, actually implementing some of the recommendations that, that you had in there uh, and allowing some to sunset. And uh, the, those that sunset are two that were in, in Bill C-30, and we have a rationale for letting those sunset, basically because the situation has changed considerably since 2013-2014. Uh, uh, so I, I don't believe there is a gap. I think that we have addressed all of the recommendations well, and in fact, I would say we have gone beyond in addressing uh, other recommendations that the CTA review panel put forward and that stakeholders have been asking for for uh, a, a few years. Okay. Um, in your opening remarks, uh, you mentioned con some consultations that were taken in regards to rail, and I'm wondering if you've had taken uh, general consultations in regards to the entire proposed amendments. Um, Thank you again for the question. Um, I can tell you that we've done exhaustive consultation. Um, we normally do not consult on the amendments uh, that are in the bill, as that is parliamentary privilege. Uh, but we do consult on uh, the policy direct and direction and the issues that we are looking at taking. And uh, that consultation has happened over the last 18 months uh, with uh, the minister launching that right after he tabled the CTA review, uh, CTA review panel report last February. He launched a series of 10 roundtables across the country that were focused on the themes of uh, the transportation plan that he then announced last fall. Uh, in addition to that, um, uh, he uh, had two Facebook Live sessions with Canadians. Uh, we also had uh, opportunities for stakeholders to put comments online. We received about 230 submissions online. We had over 70 submissions written in. Um, as part of our consultation and another 70 that went directly to the minister. Those submissions have informed uh, our advice and our amendments and uh, we also involved our provincial and territorial colleagues as well in that process. Since then we have continued to work uh, exhaustively with um, uh, the railways, uh, the rail sector, so shippers that use the railways, other players in the rail sector to make sure that we understand what their concerns were and making sure that we would we were addressing the issues that they had in putting forward this package. Thank you. And I guess in relation to Canadians, uh, how do they benefit from these changes? I would say that that is probably one of the most um, important elements of this bill. Um, a minute, you know, the minister and ourselves have been hearing for years about uh, air travel. Uh, and that people are frustrated with their air travel experience. And so the, the passenger rights that are included in this bill are in fact revolutionary from a Canadian perspective. And we've really looked across the globe to look at what other countries have in place and taking the best of what we've, uh, what we've seen in other countries and making sure that we're addressing the irritants that I listed off in my speech because that is what matters to Canadians. And this is an issue that I think has been quite active in the media even as, as late as last week here in Ottawa uh, with the Air Transat uh, situation. And so I think for, for Canadians that is really, really important. But I, I'd say that the rest of the bill, particularly like the rail freight and the marine measures, Interject are also quick, important. I'm running a little short on time mm -hmm. here. Uh, something in regards to the passenger rights that caught my eye was that penalties aren't actually built into the legislation. Uh, what are the merits of this? 
You'll notice that in the Act, the amendments actually give the uh, Canadian Transportation Agency uh, the authority to make regulations. So the details of the compensation regimes, the, the how those irritants will be addressed will be in regulations and we will work with the agency. We want to make sure that Canadians have an opportunity uh, to voice their views on what that compensation should be to make sure that it addresses their concerns. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, 